Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Utah teenagers arrested for stealing an airplane. I fly indoor skydiving opens in Northeast Florida. And FAA issues SAIB for Aspen EFD units. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's November 30th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Last week, two teenage boys were arrested near the Vernal Regional Airport after landing a small plane they had stolen from a private airstrip in Jensen, Utah. At this time, investigators believe the boys, ages 14 and 15, left a group home on the Wasatch Front earlier this week and made their way to eastern Utah, where they have been staying with friends in the Jensen area. The teens gained access to a tractor and drove it to the airstrip in Jensen, where they stole a fixed-wing single-engine light sport aircraft. The plane was witnessed flying very low along US-40 near Gusher, about 32 miles west of Jensen. Based on information obtained by investigators, the teens mentioned flying back towards the Wasatch Front, but decided not to and returned to Vernal where they landed at the airport. Both teens are being held in the Split Mountain Youth Detention Center in Vernal on multiple charges. After the break, SpaceX has stayed for commercial crew demo flights. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. NASA has updated the schedule posted on its commercial crew blog to indicate that the first flight of an uncrewed human-rated SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule is planned for January 7, 2019. The launch is scheduled for 11.55 p.m. from Launch Complex 30A and will last about two weeks. The flight is intended to demonstrate the Crew Dragon is ready for use as a ferry for astronauts to the International Space Station. The 250 passengers on a lot Polish Airlines flight were asked to pay for repairs to a hydraulic pump on the airline's Dreamliner that was taking them from Beijing to Poland when a mechanic reportedly demanded payment in cash. The pump developed a leak after the plane landed at Beijing Capital International Airport on November 11th. The plane was scheduled to return to Warsaw the following day, but needed to be repaired before takeoff. The passengers were asked to pay for the replacement pump. Elected officials and residents on Long Island, New York, are insisting that the FAA hold formal public hearings on the North Shore helicopter route, but the agency said that it is reviewing the request for the hearings. The FAA says the agency would hold three forums to afford members of the public the opportunity to provide comments about the North Shore helicopter route. That's consistent with the purpose of the directive, which is to get feedback from the impacted communities. Copter Group AG has started the next phase of its helicopter development and certification program with its latest SH-09 prototype number three. Assembled at the copter facility at Mollus Airfield, It incorporates several improvements and modifications based on the feedback resulting from the testing of the copter prototypes 1 and 2. P-1 
P3 flew from Wallace Airfield for 40 minutes and successfully completed its first flight test schedule, which included a series of maneuvers aimed to obtaining preliminary flight data, validating test design features, and evaluating flight qualities. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. For those who might like to experience skydiving freefall without having to actually jump out of an airplane, iFly has opened its latest location in Jacksonville, Florida. The facility near St. John's Town Center is the fifth iFly location to open in Florida and the 39th in the United States. There are 74 iFly locations worldwide. The company reports that it is beyond excited to be opening in Northeast Florida to share with everyone the sport of body flight. Construction of the $10 million facility began early in 2018 and was completed ahead of schedule. The entry-level experience lasts between one and a half and two hours and includes instruction and flight gear. Instructors are certified by the International Body Flight Association. A&N's Jim Campbell, a veteran of over 3,000 actual skydives and who has earned both USPA Jumpmaster and Instructor credentials, visited the facility on opening day and reported that he was impressed by the professionalism he found among the instructors, the safety consciousness of the staff, as well as the latest technology represented by the current generation of wind tunnels, and looks forward to testing out the operation shortly. After these messages, FAA issues, SAIB for Aspen EFD units. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. The FAA has recently been notified that there have been numerous reports of Aspen EFD-1000 PFD, EFD-1000 MFD, EFD-1000 EBD, and EFD-500 MFD units with software version 2.9 and the ADSBN weather interface option repeatedly resetting itself in flight. The reset occurs between 5 to 10 minute intervals. During the time of the reset, the pilot might not have any EFD displayed information, including access to altitude and airspeed, for up to one minute. The cause of the safety issue is currently under investigation. However, preliminary information suggests that the cause of the continuous reset is related to the ADSBN interface. Pulling the ADSB circuit breaker as described in Section 3.2.6 of the Flight Manual Supplement has been demonstrated to resolve the issue. The FAA has issued an SAIB concerning Aspen Evolution EFD-1000 PFD and EFD-1000 MFD and EFD-500 MFD unit as installed by STC number SA10822SC. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday alternating with Airborne Amend on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and we'll see you Monday.